Starting off this countdown, we have the Adidas shoes. Now, this is a famous case of supposed time travel. A couple of years ago, an ancient mummy was unearthed in Mongolia. Nothing was too off about the mummy, besides the fact that she wore shoes that looked like Adidas trainers. The shoes had red and black stripes on it. I personally don't see the resemblance with the shoes, but others are convinced that this body belongs to a time traveler. Upon analyzing the body further, they found that it belonged to a woman who died from a blow to the head. It's theorized that this woman may have indeed have been a time traveler and was killed after her identity was leaked. What else could explain the fact that this woman was found wearing Adidas? Just a little tip, if you're going time traveling, don't wear Nike or Adidas. Moving on to number nine, we have the fight. A video of Mike Tyson's fight from 1995 went viral online for containing supposed proof of a time traveler. In the background of the video, you can see a man who appears to be recording or taking photos of the fight on an iPhone or another modern camera phone. The fight was in 1995 and camera phones were not sold until the 2000s. As a result, many people are convinced that the man in the audience is a time traveler, who I guess is a fan of Mike Tyson. What also tripped people out is the fact that the main cameras used in the 90s were the ones with the lenses in the middle. This camera is clearly lacking that. However, others believe that the man is not a time traveler and in fact was just taking a photo on a camera known as the Casio QV-10A. Even though it's been potentially debunked, there are people out there that don't believe it for a second. In our 8th spot, we have the Mohawk Man. It's like, where's Waldo with these photos? Except you're looking for the person that doesn't belong. So this next image is apparently from 1905 and shows workers and a banana boat delivering goods. However, near the boat, there appears to be someone standing there in a white t-shirt rocking a Mohawk style haircut, which is a very unusual haircut for that time period. The men in the photo are wearing suits and top hats and have fancy mustaches and look well dressed. Whereas he's there in a plain t-shirt. Due to the fact that he looks out of place, people have pegged him as a time traveler. He kind of reminds me of Robert De Niro from Taxi Driver though. In our 7th spot, we have the hipster. Another very popular photo that has been circulating online. So the photo contains a crowd of people in the 1940s at the reopening ceremony for the South Fork Bridge in British Columbia. Well. In this photo, everyone seems to be dressed up besides the man on the right hand side of the photo. Everyone else is in suits and top hats and this tall man seems to be very out of place dressed like a hipster, hence why he was given that name. He can be seen sporting funky sunglasses, a graphic t-shirt, and of course is carrying a camera. Now some believe that he is indeed a time traveler whereas others have tried to debunk it. They claim that all the items he is seen wearing were available back in 1941 when the photo was taken. Either way, he looks pretty out of place. In our sixth spot, we have Greta Thunberg. I'm sure all of you have heard about Greta Thunberg, the young Swedish activist who is spreading the word about climate change. Well, there's a theory out there that Greta is actually a time traveler. This theory came to life after a photo of three children was uploaded to the internet. These children appeared to be at a gold mine on Dominion Creek in the Yukon. However, the one girl looks identical to Greta and is even wearing the same braided hairstyle. As a result, people believe that Greta is a time traveler sent from the future to save humanity before we completely destroy it. And then apparently she traveled back to 1898 to the Yukon before coming to the present moment. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the fence legend. So this one is more of a legend, but either way, it makes for a good time traveling story. So legend goes that there was a 30 year old man named Rudolph Fentz who was hit and injured by a New York taxi in the 1950s. His pockets contained a copper token for beer, a bill for the care of a horse, and a letter from 1876 among other unusual items. Turns out that this man was a person who disappeared in 1876 at the age of 29. Like I mentioned before, this is apparently a legend that originated from a 1951 short storybook. But others believe that this is actually a cover up and that Rudolph Fence was a real man who was a time traveler. Making our way down the list at number four, we have the beach time traveler. What's something you would do if you could time travel? Maybe stop a tragedy from happening, save someone's life, or just chill at the beach getting some rays? Because 
That last one is exactly what this time traveler did. A photo from September 1943 apparently shows British factory workers enjoying their break on the beach during the midst of wartime. Everyone is seen wearing bathing suits that fit the era. But right in the middle of the photo is a man in a brown suit who honestly looks like Mr. Bean. This dude is also checking something that looks like a phone. Some even say that he's checking his time travel device. People were really weirded out about this man because he sticks out like a sore thumb. As a result, he has been deemed a time traveler. Coming in our third spot, we have the film extra. In this next situation, a woman time traveled to be an extra in a Charlie Chaplin film. Or so it appears that way. In the 1928 film, a woman who appears to be taking a phone call can be seen crossing the screen. The video was in the behind the scenes footage from Chaplin's film, The Circus. The woman is in a long black coat and is holding something to her ear, which she is speaking into. Of course, in 1928, there were no cell phones, so how is this possible? Two words, time travel. However, Others believe that she is simply holding a hearing device to her ear, or that she's holding up her hand to shield her eyes from the sun. But that still doesn't explain why she appears to be talking to herself and holding the black rectangular object like a cell phone. Let me know in the comments below what you think about this one. In our second spot, we have the Canadian man. Now, this photo is pretty odd. The photo is over 100 years old and shows a bunch of dressed up Canadians chilling on a hill. Eh, another Canadian time traveler. At first glance, everything appears to be normal, until you take a closer look. On the left side of the photo, there's a man on the hill that seems out of place. I mean, the men are dressed up in top hats and suits, and he's just chilling there in a t-shirt and shorts. In fact, the two men beside him are giving him a look like, who's this guy? As a result, people have referred to him as the surfing time traveler. Like seriously, he seems so out of place. But also, why would you choose that as your time traveling outfit? Like I'd pick something cool, like a leather jacket, you know, look all cool and edgy. And in our number one spot, we have the cell phone. Another time traveler caught using a cell phone. So if you're gonna go back in time, don't bring your phone. A film from 1938 shows a woman talking on a device that looks just like a cell phone. Again, how is that possible when the first mobile phone wasn't available to buy until around the 80s? After this video made headlines, a YouTube user came forward claiming that the lady in the video was her great grandmother. She apparently asked her grandmother, whose name is Gertrude Smith, about the video and she said that she really was using a cell phone. Apparently, the phones were a prototype developed by a communicator factory in Massachusetts. Gertrude and five other women were given the phones to test out for a week. But it's still hard to believe that this company was way ahead of the times. When mobile phones were ready, they were big, not the small ones that fit comfortably in your hand as seen in the video. So it really does make us wonder, what's real and what's not? Honestly, it seems hard to believe and Gertrude Smith? Seems like a made up name. And it was never even confirmed if what this user said was true. So it may just be that time travel is real and Gertrude was not too sly and got caught in action. Starting off this countdown, we have the World Cup. During the 1962 FIFA World Cup, somebody captured a photo of the Brazilian team celebrating as they lift their trophy. But the photo captured more than just that. Towards the bottom of the photo, there is a man who appears to be taking a picture using a flip style cell phone. Obviously, flip phones weren't a thing back then, so this has led people to believe that this guy is a time traveler and obviously a fan of soccer. As a soccer player, I respect that. Now, it's quite weird that this time traveler would have a flip phone with them. Like, out of all devices, they chose to bring a flip phone back in time with them. On the other hand, people believe that the phone is actually just a film camera held at a weird angle, but who knows? In our ninth spot, we have Nicolas Cage. Okay, some of you may know this, um, I know the true fans will, but I love Nicolas Cage. National Treasures, great movie, don't come at me. Well, Nicolas Cage is theorized to be a time traveler. That's right. He's the face of a meme, an actor, America's national treasure, and even a time traveler. What a, what a great thing to be able to write on your resume. 
There's a photo of a man from the 19th century that looks pretty identical to this Academy Award winning actor. The photo was taken in 1870 and features a Tennessee man dressed in a snazzy outfit. The photo was found in the back of an album of death portraits. And this photo could be yours for one million dollars. Seriously, that's how much it's listed for. But anyways, this photo might just prove that Nick Cage is a time traveler. In our 8th spot we have the Brass Bell. In 1944 a 10 year old boy by the name of Newton Anderson was shoveling coal into his furnace at his home when a piece of coal was dropped and broke in half. Inside the coal revealed a mysterious bell. Keep in mind that the coal was found to be 300 million years old. Back then the dominant life form on earth were insects. Not only that, but studies on the bell revealed that it was handmade. So it's physically impossible for a bell like that to have been manufactured back then. So this has led people to believe that a time traveler went back in time to that time period and dropped their bell while doing so. But who the heck carries a bell with them when they're going back in time? Like that's not something that would be in my suitcase. Now of course, people were skeptical. They thought that the boy lied and didn't find the bell in the coal. But he underwent a polygraph test conducted by a specialist who worked on death row cases. It was discovered that he was indeed telling the truth. So now the question is, who was the time traveler that dropped this on their mission? And what is the significance behind the bell? Moving on to number 7 we have the toothed wheel. A Russian man was using coal to heat his home when he realized something odd sticking out of it. Researchers stated that it looked like a toothed wheel. Testing of this object revealed that it was 98% aluminum and 2% magnesium. What's weird is humans didn't learn to make aluminum until 1825. But this coal piece is 300 million years old. And the tooth object appears to be artificially made. Again, how did a man made object find its way in a 300 million year old piece of coal? Not only that, but the object resembles parts that are used in things like microscopes or electronic devices. Or maybe time machines. It could be that a time traveler went back to that time period and then a piece broke off of his time traveling device or something. In our sixth spot, we have the skater boy. Skateboarding was an activity that became increasingly popular during the mid 70s. But here's the thing there's a photo of a well dressed man boarding through New York's Central Park. The photo was taken back in the 1960s when very few people were out skateboarding. In fact, it was very rare to see people skateboarding before the 70s because it was not a popular activity at all. And even when it did become popular, it took years before it was embraced as a real sport. So then, who is this man in a suit that is riding a board? He looks super out of place. This has led people to believe that he is a time traveler from the future that clearly likes skateboarding as his method of transportation. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with John Teeter. John Teeter is a supposed time traveler from the year 2036 on a military mission. He first made his appearance on the internet in the 2000s on online forums. He would post about predictions or share stories from the future. The reason for him traveling back in time is so that he can get an IBM 5100, which apparently had a secret function that could translate anything to any language. I have no clue why he needed it, but he did. On the forums, John also posted grainy photos of the time machine and of the military logo from the future. In 2001, John disappeared from online and was never heard from again. So some people believe that he is a real time traveler. Maybe he made it back home or maybe something else happened to him. In our fourth spot we have Leonardo da Vinci. Leonardo da Vinci was a painter, sculptor, inventor, engineer and architect during the renaissance. However, he's probably most famous for his painting, The Mona Lisa. Well, believe it or not, but da Vinci is thought to be a time traveler. Hear me out, okay? Leonardo da Vinci was often considered way ahead of his time. Well, maybe this is quite literally since he's thought to have come from the future. One theory is that he went back in time to steal others accomplishments or to help advance the world. This dude was a genius. He knew more things than anyone else did in that time period. For example, 
Da Vinci drew pictures of a helicopter in 1493. That's around 450 years before an actual helicopter was created. But not only that, he had the idea for an armored fighting vehicle, aka tanks. And he also invented the idea of a submarine. He talked about ships that could travel underwater and even sketched designs of them. So da Vinci somehow came up with all of these modern day inventions and more. How? Because he's a time traveler. Making our way down the list in number 3 we have the self proclaimed traveler. Over the years a number of people have come forward claiming that they are time travelers from the future. Which is the case for this next man. A couple of years ago an older Greek man came forward saying that he traveled in time to the year 3207. Of course, during his interview he had his identity hidden for safety reasons. His face was blurred out and his voice was distorted. Now he claims that he was shot forward in time and spent 2 days in the year 3207 as part of a top secret military program. He claims that in the future the buildings were massive, triple the size that they are today. He also says that there were flying cars and that there was strange colored grass. It wasn't green but he said it was a deep purple. And lastly he says that aliens, humans, big animals and robots all were walking together down the street. And that seems like a pretty crazy future and why is the grass purple? Like what kind of environmental mutation happened there? I don't, I don't even want to know. Coming in at number 2 we have Paul Dynick. In 1921 a man named Paul Dynick, a Swiss Australian teacher slipped into a coma for about a year. For that year he claimed that he went to the year 3096 where he switched consciousness with a man named Andrew Northman. One minute he was in a coma, next he's inside Andrew's body speaking a foreign language. For that year he was living as Andrew. Friends of Andrew even noticed his personality changed. Paul was so scared to tell anyone of his experience so he wrote it in his diary and kept it a secret. However just before he passed away he gave his diary to one of his students to translate. And that's when it was revealed that he had somehow time traveled to the future. And in our number one spot we have Donald Trump. This has to be one of the creepiest theories out there. So theory goes that Donald Trump and his son Baron Trump are both time travelers from the future. Theory goes that Trump traveled back in time to become the ruler of America. Now here's the thing. These theories arise after someone discovered two books on the Office of Congress Library website. The books are called Baron Trump's Marvelous Underground Journey and 1900 or The Last President. Both were written in the 1890s by Ingersoll Lockwood. The book Baron Trump is about a young boy who finds a secret portal and time travels. Both books have eerie connections to Donald Trump and his family. First off, the book is called Baron Trump and Baron Trump is the name of Donald Trump's son. There are way more freaky coincidences though. Like how at one point in the book he was guided by a man named Don, aka Donald Trump. And then in the book The Last President, it's about an unlikely presidential candidate that won the election. Sound familiar? Even freakier, the book talks about the Fifth Avenue Hotel and the address of the hotel in the book is the exact address where Trump's tower currently stands. Hold on, it gets creepier. In the book there is a character named Laugh Pence who is the secretary of agriculture. Come on, like hello, the vice president's name is Mike Pence. There's just too many similarities between the books and Donald Trump's life. So people believe that this book was actually written about Trump and his family. Starting off this countdown we have the Antikythera mechanism. In the 1900s a team of divers exploring a Greek island made a fascinating discovery. They came across an ancient shipwreck. The ship was filled with statues, jewelry, coins, pottery, etc. But the weirdest thing the ship contained was this blob of corroded bronze and wood. Two years later an archaeologist decided to examine this and it was discovered that it was some sort of astronomical clock. But the items came from ancient Greece and clocks hadn't been invented then. So it's pretty weird. That's suspicious as Cardi B would say. So this item was in similar size to a mantle clock. 
The bits of wood fragments on it suggest that it was probably in a wooden case. They also believe the case would have had a large circular face with rotating hands. There was also a knob on the side and the mechanism could rotate forwards or backwards. Needless to say, it was a fairly complex object for that time period. So some believe that it was left by time travelers. Moving on to number nine, we have the Viking sword. And guys, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up because it really helps us out. Archaeologists unearthed the Viking sword, Ulfbert, that dates back from 800 to 1000 AD. And I hope I said the sword's name right, or else you guys are gonna just come at me in the comments. So this was quite shocking since they didn't have technology to make those kind of swords back then. It was only available 800 years later during the Industrial Revolution. So what's up with that? Jerry Seinfeld, what's up with that? Not only that, but its carbon content is three times higher than other swords of its time. It suggests that iron ore must have been heated to at least 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit to make this sword. And they didn't have that kind of technology to do that back then. So everyone is just freaking confused. It might have been dropped by a time traveler or something like that. In our eighth spot, we have the drill bit. So for this point, a weird drill bit was found in a piece of coal. Okay, so maybe a worker lost it while working in the mines or shoveling some coal. But no, the piece of coal that it was found in was said to have formed hundreds of millions of years ago. You know, back when they didn't have drill bits. How was it that this ended up in coal? Could it be part of a time machine that fell out during the traveler's journey? Who knows? But it's pretty weird and an unexplainable discovery. Not to mention the coal was around 22 inches thick and buried down seven feet. It just makes no sense. Moving on to number seven, we have the brass bell. Here's another weird object found inside of coal. I feel like we could just do a whole list on top 10 weird objects found in coal. So basically, in 1944, a 10 year old boy by the name of Newton Anderson was shoveling coal into his furnace at his house. That's when a piece of coal was dropped and it broke in half. Inside the coal, there was this mysterious bell. But the coal that he was using was said to be around 300 million years old. Back then, the dominant life form on Earth was insects. So obviously they weren't using bells. Also, the bell contains an unusual mixture of metals, including copper, zinc, tin, arsenic, iodine, and selenium. Not a typical combination used to make objects. Now, a man named Boris Belaz ended up taking the bell to the geology department at the University of Delaware. They conducted studies and discovered that the bell was handmade. So again, how on earth is this possible? And what time traveler brings a bell with them on their journey? Seriously, out of all things, a bell. In our sixth spot, we have the dino figures. In 1944, thousands of little dino looking figurines were dug up in Mexico. I mean, okay, that's cool. I'd buy a figurine of a dinosaur. The only problem is that people and dinosaurs didn't exist at the same time. There were around 32,000 carved pieces. The pieces date back to 2500 BCE time when there were no dinosaurs around and people couldn't have possibly known about them. This is all according to scientists. What does this even mean? Like were there some other creatures that roamed the earth back then that we don't know of? Or is there a time traveling paleontologist out there? We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the Coso artifact. In 1961, three rock hunters were exploring the mountains of Eastern California with hopes to find geos to sell at their gift shop. They gathered a bunch of them and then took them back home where they proceeded to cut them in half. However, one of the geodes practically broke their new crystal saw in half when they were trying to get it open. Instead of finding crystals inside, they actually discovered something more intriguing. Inside this rock mass was a perfectly circular porcelain-like section. In the center of the section was a tiny magnetic pin. An x-ray of the rock revealed that there was also a spring or helix at one end. From there, people realized that it resembles a modern day spark plug. However, it's theorized that this rock is about 500,000 years old. But spark plugs were not invented until the 19th century. Again, is this a piece from a time machine or what? In our fourth spot, we have the ancient laptop. In a sculpture from 100 BC, it depicts what appears to be a young girl holding open a laptop for another woman. Of course, they didn't have laptops back then, so what is this? Not gonna lie, it does look like a laptop. And if it's not, 
then what is it? People then thought, okay, maybe it's a jewelry box, but the width of the structure is too narrow to be a jewelry box. Now, here's something to think about. Look back at the old Greek tales about the Oracle of Delphi. This was said to allow the priests to connect with the gods. In return, they give them advanced info. Many believe that this was given to them from the gods. Not only that, but the thing she's holding has two holes in it. Maybe one for a charging cable and the other for a USB key, perhaps? I don't know, that's just what people think. Moving on, number three, we have the gold airplanes. A couple of years ago, researchers were studying the Incas when they discovered they left behind some interesting objects. One was a small golden figurine that closely resembles a modern jet plane. Upon analyzing them, people have noticed that the figures have what appears to be wings, a stabilizing tail, and landing gears. But of course, they didn't have planes back then, so isn't that interesting? Ancient astronaut theorists are convinced that the Incas somehow knew what planes were. This has led people to believe that maybe they they were in contact with aliens. In our second spot, we have the old hammer. Back in 1934, a hammer was found in Texas. The hammer was encased in stone. This stone was said to be more than 100 million years old. Which brings up the question, how the hell did they have hammers 100 million years ago? The hammer was complete with a wooden handle and everything, but it had turned to coal because of the age. This suggests that this hammer was made even before humans were around. I'm telling you, some time traveler went back 100 million years ago and then left their damn hammer. Or maybe their machine broke down and they tried to fix it, but were unsuccessful and got stuck there. And all that survived was their lone hammer. And in our number one spot, we have the Egyptian hieroglyphs. This one is pretty crazy, not gonna lie. So upon studying ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs, scientists noticed some unusual glyphs present. These glyphs looked exactly like modern day planes and helicopters. Obviously, they didn't have planes and helicopters back then, so this is crazy. These glyphs were found in a temple in Egypt and are said to be roughly 3,000 years old. There's drawings of insects and birds, and then you can clearly see what looks like those two aircrafts. So there are a couple of theories here. Number one, Egyptians are smarter and way more advanced than we thought. They didn't have planes, but maybe they were already drawing blueprints for them. Theory two, they were visited by alien life forms. And what they were drawing are the alien spacecrafts that they saw. Or three, they developed time travel and saw into the future. And then they're trying to tell others about what they saw in the future through these glyphs. Coming into number 10, we have W Man. What does the W stand for? William? Wallace? Women? Oaxaca? Oh, only our British audience will get this, but I really miss Oaxaca. Get me some sweet potato tacos immediately. Tacos probably weren't a thing in 1940s Canada when this picture was taken, although I bet Mr. W has eaten a few, because look at him, he's a blatant time traveler hipster. A lot of people dub this guy the time traveling hipster, and he does certainly look like he would be better placed working in Silicon Valley in San Francisco, or Ubisoft. The picture was taken at the open of South Fork Bridge, but it got the world's attention in 2010 at a photo exhibit. The guy is wearing sunnies and looks like he is holding a far, far more modern DSLR camera. Sadly, it does turn out that the letter on his shirt is actually an M for the Montreal Maroons, who played in the NHL from 1924 to 1938. So, that being said, he could just be trying to blend in. Although, to be honest with you, the rest of him is pretty standout. What do you guys think? Is he a time traveler? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Coming into number nine, we have Charlie Chaplin's time traveling extra. Take a look at this footage from Charlie Chaplin's 1928 movie Circus. If this footage was from the modern day, the first thing you would notice is that it's in black and white. You wouldn't pay any attention to the woman who is clearly on her mobile phone in the background walking behind a zebra. But this is 1928 and cell phones won't be readily available for another 70 so years. Even the early cell phones of the 1980s were chunky. This woman is clearly time traveling from the future and judging by the size of her phone, I would say from the next millennium. This time traveler is caught on camera all the time. We have Nicolas Cage at number eight. Fun fact, Nicolas Cage has the same birthday as me. Second fun fact, did you know that the Academy Award and Golden Globe Award winning actor Nicolas Cage is indeed a time traveler? No? Well, he is. The actor uses a personally developed style of performance that he calls Nouveau Shamanic, which 
Fisher. I mean, sure. Maybe it's something that he's developed across the ages, as it seems that the film legend is indeed a time traveller. He's also fulfilled a lot of roles in history. Here he is as Mexican Emperor Maximilian I of Hasburgo. And here he is as an unidentified man from Bristol, Tennessee in 1870. The actor was forced to publicly deny it on Letterman. Spotted at the beach at number 7. So this picture here is a lovely snap of British war workers escaping the perils of their job for one much needed sunny day in 1943. The image was shared on Twitter and the poster was asking people to identify where the beach was. It turns out that the beach in question was Towan Beach in Cornwall, but more than the stretch of sand was identified here. It seemed that eagle eyed viewers spotted a man on a smartphone in the middle of the picture. He could just be looking at something in his hand, but doesn't it look like he's on his phone? Honestly, to me it seems like he is so checking his phone. To me, it looks like he's just received a really confusing text from Bay and he's not sure how to respond. So phones feature heavily on this list, so do prepare yourself for more and even more shocking examples. But before we get to that, let me pose to you that Michael Jackson isn't actually dead, he's time traveling. Find out why I've drawn this conclusion at number six. YouTube account Fact5 compiled a number of pictures that have shown the King of Pop popping up through history. So weird that this was never spotted until he died. It's like he's out there somewhere changing the future. Here's a painting of Michael from like, let's say, the late 1700s, and then there's this Egyptian statue of him. Right. Roll up for another iPhone. This one comes 60 to 70 ish years ahead of schedule. We have Henry Fonda's touchscreen at number five. This clip is from the 1948 John Wayne movie, Fort Apache. And there is a scene in which the character Lieutenant Colonel Owen Thursday, played by Henry Fonda, whips out his iPhone and goes over a list of names with his daughter Philadelphia, played by Shirley Temple. Check it out and tell me what you think. To me, He's holding that just like a slim iPhone X, although I feel like this is probably just a notebook. But it looks a lot like an iPhone. I don't know. What do you think? Coming into number four, we have a time traveling car. This time traveling car has totally vexed the internet time and time again. This footage was allegedly caught on a Russian police officer's dash cam and features what can only be described as a time traveling car. Is that the DeLorean? The footage starts as the car is turning left. We can see the traffic at a standstill, and then on the right, all of a sudden, a car comes from nowhere. Like, seriously, nowhere. It's definitely the Doctor and Marty McFly. Oh, wait, see, let me slow this down for you and you can watch again because this is so crazy. Like, where did it come from? Time traveling! Uploaded by Rose Adams on YouTube, this video has been watched over 1 million times, and by the looks of the comments, a lot of people are just as confused as me. Okay, the teleporting or time traveling car did have me pretty convinced, although I am less sure about this one. At number three, we have a time traveling hero. So, this video was uploaded in September 2012 and has been watched a staggering 11 million times. In it, we see a super fast time traveling superhero come out of nowhere and rescue a guy on a motorbike who looks like he was about to be killed by an oncoming truck. Time traveler, teleporter, basically the same thing, right? Well, it turns out that actually this is a hoax, a viral marketing campaign for a Chinese game called Dragon Totem Girl. Wow. Okay, that may have been a hoax, but this seems very legit. We have this chatty factory worker at number two. Watch out, here come the girls. This footage was shot in 1938 and is thought to be of factory workers leaving for the day. There they all are in their 1930s looking clothing, behaving as I would expect until this lady comes along. Now, to me, she very much looks like she's holding an early 2000s flip phone. I remember those. So good. Something really satisfactory about flipping a phone. Seriously though, look at her. What else could she be doing? She seems to be engaging with the phone as if she's talking to someone and she's smiling but not at the woman next to her. According to a video that Danny made earlier about time travellers, in 2013, a woman came forward in the comments section of the video to say that she was the great granddaughter of this woman. She says her name was Gertrude. She said that Gertrude was actually part of a science and tech experiment to test a wireless phone, although like really there isn't that much scientific evidence to back that up at all. And since then, the comments section has been axed. What does this mean? Finally, coming into number one, we have something strange happening in the background of a 1995 Mike Tyson fight. Whoa, 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 absolute smartphone alert. 
So this was a fight between Tyson and Peter McNeely that went down in Vegas in 1995. Yes, there were mobile phones in 95, but not smartphones. Smartphones only entered the market in and around 2007. Before that, phone cameras were total garbage. This clearly looks like a white Android phone from after 2014 with at least a 12 megapixel camera. We could only dream of 12 megapixels in the 90s. This footage is legit and knowing our generation who can't be separated from their phones, if they were to time travel back to see a Mike Tyson fight, many people would be tempted to whip out their phones even if their time travelling was supposed to be a secret. Well honestly, we caught you mate.